Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on refraction and lenses. The topic of this video is Snell's Law and Ray Tracing, and we want to know how do you combine Snell's Law and Geometry to analyze a complex refraction scenario and trace the path of light into and out of a material. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. When light crosses the boundary between two materials, it undergoes a change in direction. We refer to this as refraction. Snell's Law of Refraction describes the mathematical relationship between the angles of incidence and the angles of refraction. The equation looks something like this. In the equation, the in values refer to the index of refraction of the two materials. We could call them the incident material and the refractive material. And the angles theta describe the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. Fraction. It's important to note that the angle of incidence is the angle between the incident ray and the normal line, and the angle of refraction is the angle between the refracted ray R and the normal line. In this video, I show the solution to four Snell's Law problems. The first is a routine warm-up problem, while the last three are complex scenarios that require careful reading, geometry, and Snell's Law. If you're looking for routine problems, check out this video here. I left a link to it in the description section. In this video near the end, I show the solution of two more routine problems, but if you're looking for some complex problems to solve, stay tuned. You'll see them right here. In our first example, a ray of light is in air traveling towards the boundary with glass. The angle of incidence is stated as 52 degrees and the index of refraction values are on the diagram. I want to solve for the angle of glass and draw the refracted ray. I begin by identifying what I know. I know the in of air and the in of glass, 1.00 and 1.52, and I know the angle in the air. And what I'm looking to calculate is the angle in the glass. So I take the three known values and I substitute them into Snell's Law equation. I'm going to try to solve algebraically for the angle in glass. So I evaluate the left side of the equation and then I divide by 1.52. I get an equation that looks something like this. Now I want to know what angle in glass has a sine value of 0.518428. To do that I use the inverse sine function. That's usually two buttons on your calculator, the second button and the sine button. So I can say the angle in glass is equal to the inverse sine of 0.518 blah blah blah. Now I use the two buttons on my calculator and I find that the angle in glass is 31 degrees. It's important to note the practice that I have here of not rounding until I get to my final answer. And once I do get to the final answer, I round that answer to the proper number of significant digits. Now it's time to draw the, the ray on the diagram. So I lay a protractor on top of my diagram so that the origin of that polar coordinate protractor is at the point of incidence of this light ray to the boundary. And then I measure from the normal line 31 degrees out to the right side of that normal line and I draw my refracted ray. There you see it. Now I'm done. In the second problem, I once more have light and air approaching a boundary with glass, and I know the same things, the angle of incidence and the two indices of refraction values. But this problem is a type of problem known as a layer problem, because once the light enters the glass, it will pass through the glass and pass out of the glass back into air on the opposite side of the layer. And I want to trace the path of light into, through, and out of the glass. I begin by analyzing the first boundary, and at that boundary, as light enters the glass, I write down what I know, the index of refraction of air, the index of refraction of glass, and the angle in the air, 42.0. Now what I want to do is substitute these values into the Snell's Law equation in order to solve for the angle in the glass at the entry point. So I substitute the values into the equation. I evaluate the left side. I divide both sides of the equation by 1.00, and then I take the inverse sine. I end up getting 26.117 and some change. This is the angle of refraction at the first boundary. So I'm going to lay a protractor down. I'm going to measure out about 26 degrees, and I'm going to draw my refracted ray. There you see it. Now I can pull my protractor away, and I'm going to approach the, the problem of the second boundary. In order to analyze the second boundary, I need to know the angle of incidence in the glass at that boundary. And if you study the diagram, you'll notice the angle of incidence in the glass at boundary 2 is equal to the angle of refraction in the glass at boundary 1. These are alternate interior angles of parallel lines, and such angles are equal to one another. So at the second boundary, I know three things. I know the two indexes of refraction values, and I know the angle of incidence in the glass. I'm looking to calculate the angle 
angle of refraction in the air. So I set up Snell's law by substituting the three known values into the equation. You'll note that the 1.52 and the 26.117 go on the same side of the equation since those are measured values for the glass. I'm going to evaluate the left side of the equation, divide both sides of the equation by 1.00, and then take the inverse sine of the result. And what I get is exactly 42.0 degrees. It's the same angle of refraction as the angle of incidence in the air when it entered the, the, the glass layer. So this will always be the case whenever you have a parallelogram or a layer with parallel sides and you have the same material on the top of the layer as you have on the bottom of the layer. Then you know the entry angle will be equal to the exit angle. Now on the diagram, I'm going to lay a protractor down. I'm going to measure out 42 degrees from the normal line and I'm going to draw my refractive ray. There you see it. I finished the problem. Example 3 is another layer problem, but it's a type of problem I call a multiple layer problem, where you have one layer after another and you have to perform several calculations to trace the path of light into the layers, through the layers, and out the opposite side. You'll notice on the diagram on the left side that the boundaries between the layers are labeled with a number and we'll use those as we discuss the solution. I'm going to begin with boundary number 1. I know the angle of incidence in air and I know the index of refraction values of the two materials. So I'm going to take the three knowns and substitute it into the equation in order to solve for the angle in the glass. So once I substitute in, I'm going to do the same algebra that I do in a routine problem. I'm going to evaluate the left side. I'm going to divide both sides by 1.5 I'm going to take the inverse sine of the result, and I'm going to get my angle of refraction in the glass as the light enters the first layer. Now I'm on the diagram, I'm going to lay a protractor down, and I'm going to draw the, the, the refracted ray about 25 degrees from the normal line. There it is. I'm ready to move on to my second boundary. At the second boundary, I'll need to know the angle of refraction, the angle of incidence in the glass. It's the same as the angle of refraction at the first boundary, since these two angles are alternate interior angles of parallel lines, the parallel lines being the normal lines. So at boundary number two, the angle in the glass is 25.01 blah 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 degrees, and I know the index of refraction in the glass and the index of refraction of the water. I'm going to take these three normal values and substitute it into Snell's law equation, do the usual algebra, evaluate the left side, divide both sides by 1.33, take the inverse sign, get the result of about 29-ish degrees. So on my diagram, I'm going to lay a protractor down and I'm going to measure out from the normal line about 29 degrees and draw the refracted ray. Now I'm ready to do boundary number three, the boundary between water and diamond. Once more, the angle of incidence in the water as it approaches boundary three is equal to the angle of refraction of boundary two, since those are alternate interior angles of parallel lines. So I'm going to write down what I know. I know the N of water, the angle in water, and the N of diamond. I'm going to take the three known values, substitute it into Snell's law to solve for the angle in the diamond. It's the same usual algebra. Evaluate left side, divide both sides by 2.42, take the inverse sine of the result, and I get about 15 degrees as the angle of refraction in diamond at boundary number three. So on the diagram, I lay the protractor down, I draw the refracted ray about 15 degrees from the normal, and I'm ready to move on to boundary number four. We will do boundary four like we did the first three boundaries. And one thing that we know is we know that the angle of incidence in, in the diamond at boundary four is equal to the angle of refraction in the diamond at boundary three. So I reuse this value of 15.40348 degrees. That's the angle in the diamond. I know the in value in the diamond and I know the in value in the air. And so I'm going to substitute these three knowns into Snell's law. I'm going to evaluate the left side. I'm going to divide each side by 1.00. I'm going to take the inverse sine of the result. And wouldn't you know, I get 40 degrees, exactly 40 degrees. So on the diagram, I'm going to lay a protractor down, and I'm going to measure an ink uh, refracted ray about 40 degrees from the normal line, and I've finished my diagram. Now there's three observations to make here, and the first one is that when you have the the parallelogram idea that the that layers are all parallel and you have the same material on the top as you have on the bottom, then the entry angle will be equal to the exit angle. We started at 40 degrees in the air. As we entered, we leave at 40 degrees in the air. The second thing to point out is that the layer order doesn't matter in determining what the angle is in the various materials. For example, if you put diamond first as the first layer after the air, and you did your Snell's Law analysis, you'd end up getting 15.4 degrees as the angle in the diamond. So where 
you place the, the layers doesn't affect the angle measure that you get inside of those layers. It's only determined by the original entry angle and the index or refraction of the layer. And then the final thing to point out is that these angles are always greatest in the material with the smallest end value, and they're smallest angles in the material with the largest end value. For example, air, the smallest end value, had the largest angle, and diamond, the largest end value, had the smallest angle. My fourth and final example is a triangular prism problem. I have a light ray approaching an equal angular glass prism, and I want to trace the path of light into, through, and out of the prism. That will involve a calculation for the first boundary as light enters and the second boundary as light exits. For the first boundary, I know the angle between the light ray and the boundary. It's 20 degrees, but I want to know the angle of incidence, which is the angle between the light ray and the normal line. That would be 70 degrees, the complement of 20 degrees. So now I set up Snell's Law with my known index of refraction values and my angle of incidence, and I evaluate the left side. I divide both sides by 1.52, and I take the inverse sine of the result, and I get the angle of refraction at the first boundary. It's about 38 degrees. I lay a protractor down at the first boundary, and I draw a refracted ray about 38 degrees from the normal line, and I now have completed my first boundary. I'm ready to approach the second boundary, and this is where the geometry gets difficult. At the second boundary, I want to know the angle of incidence. I call that theta I2. In order to do that, I'm going to take this top part of my, my prism and I'm going to enlarge it so that I can talk about some angle information. At this second boundary, I'm going to be focusing on a triangle formed by the blue light ray that travels from side one to side two and the, 60, and the two sides of this triangle. There's a theta A, a theta B, and a 60 degrees inside that triangle, and the three angles of any triangle must add up to 180. The theta A inside that triangle is simply the complement of the angle of refraction calculated at the first boundary. And so theta A is 90 degrees minus that angle of refraction value, it's 51.8-ish degrees. I can take that value of 51.8 for theta A and substitute it into the equation theta A plus 60 plus theta B equal 180, and I can solve for theta B. It comes out to be 68.18 degrees. Now if you look on the diagram, you'll notice that's the angle between the second boundary and the light ray that travels across the prism. And that theta I2 would be the complement of that angle, since together theta I2 and theta B should be equal to 90 degrees. So if I subtract theta B from 90 degrees, I get the angle of incidence at the second boundary. And once I have that, I'm able to apply Snell's Law to the second boundary in order to find the angle of exit of refraction into the air. Now that we know the angle of incidence in the glass at the second boundary, we can make quick work of the completion of the problem. I know the angle in glass, I know the index of refraction of the glass, and I know the index of refraction of the air. I want to find the angle in the air as the light exits out of the triangle. So I use Snell's Law, I substitute in known values, and I do my usual algebraic steps, and I solve for the angle of refraction in the air. It comes out to be about 34.4 degrees, so I place a protractor down on the diagram, and I, and I draw an angle about 34 degrees from the normal line. I've finished the problem. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources that you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. The calculator pad section includes a collection of problems that provide great practice for this topic of Snell's Law. Mission RL4 of Minds on physics is also great practice, and if you need to brush up on a topic, try our tutorial page. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.